All right, hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, it's been a little while. I needed a little bit of a break and a refresh from AOS after Worlds. It's also the holiday season, uh, so I haven't been playing too much uh, and haven't really had time to make any podcasts. Um, but I'm ready to get back into it. Uh, the new year, I'm hoping to play a good bit, play some more tournaments, uh, all that good stuff. Plus, I got a new microphone for Christmas, so of course I have to test this out. Um, so today I was going to talk a little bit about some list building and theory hammering I've been doing lately, um, partially around just building dumb lists <laughs> and also, um, building dumb lists and then like dialing back the dumbness just a little bit to maybe actually make it into something that can work. Um, so, uh, yeah, just a after Worlds, my brain was fried. I... Cruel boys are very unforgiving. I felt like I'd thought I'd been thinking way too hard all weekend. I just I wanted to play something stupid and straightforward that I that can just go smash into people and don't think too hard about. Um, so I'm going to be talking about um, building those sorts of lists today. Uh, and uh, yeah, by by dumb. I should clarify, by dumb, I largely mean um, just kind of picking a theme and leaning into it as hard as possible. And then to make it work, maybe dialing back that theme like 10% to, to make a list that maybe actually functions. <laughs> uh, so we're not going to be talking about G GT winning lists today. We're going to be talking about I don't know, hopefully 3-2 lists today, maybe 4-1 lists today, if we're being optimistic, or if nothing else, uh, maybe fun basement lists. Um, but yeah, I, I also, so I've been focusing on Cruel Boys a little bit leading up to Worlds. Um, my Stormcast have largely been sitting neglected because they're not in a great place right now. Same with my Slaves to Darkness. Um, but I wanted to pull both of those back out, so I've been, I've been doing a lot of theory hammering about them. Uh, those those armies. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about both of them today. Um, and I'm going to be using War Scroll Builder because unlike the app, it's, it's, I can actually have it up on my computer and show it all to you as I'm messing with things. Um, so the first dumb theme <laughs> I was experimenting with uh, in my in my slaves games, I've I've played kind of a I don't have any Vanguard. So <laughs> I'm dumb. I don't have Varengard. It's probably the best thing in the book. Um, but Slaves have gotten some points drops lately. That feels like maybe it opens up some things. Um, and I've always run a unit of 10 Chosen, and they've always been the best thing in my list. They're amazing. Chosen are great. They just blend whatever they hit. Like, I've had, I've had games where they just the Chosen just march from one corner of the board to the other and just kill everything in between that they touch, and it's great. Um, obviously, AOS is about objectives and scoring points, not just killing things. Um, but Chosen are very good. So I said, you know, I, I'd been playing Cabalists. Cabalists? Yeah, I think that's how you pronounce that. Anyway, the, the guys with the extra spell, the Cabal. Um, I'd largely been playing that sub faction. Um, but my goal, I said, what if I just take as many Chosen as I possibly can? And uh, obviously one of the other really good things in Slaves is the Ensor Cell banners are very good. So I was like, all right, I'm going to take as many Chosen as I can, and I'm going to put banners on as many Chosen as I can, and, and see what I can do. So uh, I decided to take Coast of the Ever Chosen, so that Chosen are battle line, obviously. And uh, you can see this, this nicely rounds out at exactly 2,000 points. Um, so I said, all right, my core is going to be three units of 10 chosen, and every single one of them is going to have an Ensor Seld banner, which means uh, you get two from Host of the Ever Chosen, and uh, that means I need a Warlord Battalion. So I'm not going to be a one drop here. I want a Warlord Battalion. Uh, let's add this, just add that now. Do -do -do -do. Warlord, hooray. Um, I need a Warlord Battalion to get the third banner. And I was like, what what three marks are the best? I think the obvious answer... Man, I, I haven't used a Warlord Scroll 
builder much. Like, can this, can I, it, yeah, this is so much worse than the app. <laughs> I can do things that are not legal here, which is annoying. Um, but anyway, so I was like, all right, I'm going to take three units of 10 chosen, which is 1,200, 1,380 points. <laughs> That's most of my army right there. Um, wait, is that right? Yeah, 1,380. Um, so I'm, I, th I think Nurgle is a no-brainer. I think Slanesh is a no-brainer because generally when people just take one unit of 10, Slanesh is usually what people take to make him a little speedier. Um, so Slanesh, Nurgle, and then I actually, I've run, contrary to everyone else, um, I've previously run a unit of 10 undivided with the banner before, just to kind of play the roulette game of trying to uh, roll a bunch on the Eye of the Gods table and beef up their rend, you know, getting getting like rend three chosen is disgusting. <laughs> um so I think the Undivided with the banner is fun. Um, so yeah, so basically Warlord Battalion, three units of 10 chosen, all with banners, was the core of the list. And then I was like, what else can I fit? And what problems can I solve around that? Um, so like I said, obviously AOS is a scoring points game, not a just killing game. Um, so we want to be scoring points. Now, what battle tactics can we do? So, so an important thing to do whenever you're making a list is think of what battle tactics you can do. And Slaves has some decent ones. Um, so I have to, I'm going to have to pull out the actual app and remind myself what is, what is really in this list and tell you the right thing. Right. So, yeah. So I have, so I have two, as I said. Oh, I made this. Oh, hold on. This is the wrong list. <laughs> Chosen, there we go. Alright. So, right, my general is one of the sorcerer lords with an Urgle mark, just to make him a little bit harder to kill if anything gets into him. And he has demonic speed, just to make Kark Drak Lord go fast. And he has Shaman of the Chilled Lands, because having Blizzard and Hoarfrost is nice. And that's it on him. And then the other guy must have the Chaotic Conduit. Right. So the other guy doo -doo -doo, has Chaotic Conduit. Doo -doo 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 -doo, there we go. And is marked undivided. And the main reason for this is... Um, so obviously we have two sorcerers, so Magic Domination is on the table. And with two, might even do something like leave one out of Unbind range and one in Unbind range. So if they go first you can try and dispel them, but if you go first, they can't dispel one of your guys, and you can just do Magic Dom, and maybe not care too much about missing a cast on the other sorcerer. Um, so just opening up a tactic. And Slaves has the tactic where uh, you pick a character, and if they roll on the Eye of the Gods table that turn, um, you pick up the tactic. So having Chaotic Conduit on somebody, on one Lord, Sorcerer Lord, is nice, because that is just a cast to roll on the Eye of the Gods table, so if you make that cast and it can potentially be on 3d6, obviously, um, you'll get that tactic. Now, of course, there's always the option to, if you just know you're going to take back an objective that turn, like you can call that tactic that turn and do it with like the card Dracula or something, but uh, Chaotic Conduit I think is awesome because you can start juicing up the Undivided with the banner who are getting to roll twice. Um, you can do the tactic. So, yeah. And I mean, Demonic Power, their War Scroll spell is like one of the best things <laughs> in the Slaves book. So it just obviously a no-brainer to have those. Um, so I have a Nurgle Lord, an Undivided Sorcerer Lord. That means the Karkadrak obviously needs to be Slanesh, because the um, Mark-based commands can only be issued by heroes, not by champions. So if we want to make the Slanesh... Chaos, uh, chosen unit zoom fast, we need a hero. So that means the Karka Drak Lord has got to be Slanesh. And then for artifacts, I do love me a good old Helm of the Oppressor because no inspiring presence is, I think, one of the best effects in the game. Um, it just really changes, changes things massively, obviously. It's like, it's the difference between can often be the difference between wiping a unit and then, or being stuck against 
15 more zombies or something, right? Like, you go to 40 zombies with Chosen. Honestly, there's a good chance. Good chance Chosen killed 40 zombies anyway. <laughs> but it's the difference between, you know, just picking up a, a very important big unit off the board or or them inspiring presence and staying on the board. So I, I rate Helm of the Oppressor very highly. So we've got our three characters that match our three um, units uh, of Chosen, their marks, so we can issue all the commands if we want. It's probably not super necessary, like the Nurgle one isn't amazing, um, the Uninvited one isn't, is not amazing, it's, it's mostly the Slanesh you need. So maybe one of these Sorcerer Lords should be Slanesh, but I don't know, I like having the options. Um, and then think about other tactics. So in the Slaves book, we also have the tactic to take a unit that has an Ensarcelled banner that is not within enemy territory and have it end the turn wholly within enemy territory and within three inches of another one of our units. So here, we've pretty much maximized the possibility of that because we have three units of 10 chosen and each of them have a, has a banner. So, so yeah, this is the core of this list. I was like, what if I just had 90 wounds of Chosen on a 3-up save that will blend anything they touch and just make my opponent deal with it? <laughs> they're not super fast, but they're going to march across the board, they're going to take objectives, and they're going to kill anything they touch. And if I play KO, I'll cry. And, I don't know, if I play Seraphon, I will also probably cry. Because Chosen do not have the 5-up board against mortals that, like, Warriors and Karkadrak and Knights do. Uh, but that's okay. So anyway, uh, so this is 180, sorry, I said this was 1380, 1400, 1520, this is like 1700 points. Does that math out? Must be 1800 points. So I'm like, all right, I have 200 points to work with. So the next question is, what, what other problems can I solve with this list with my last 200 points? So one problem, this is obviously not very mobile which is just yelling Corvus Cabal at me, so I have one thing that can deep strike in from reserve. Um, it bothers me that it, I don't know that uh, AOS, AOS doesn't have like a catchy word for deep striking other than deep striking, and I hate using that term because it's a 40k term, but like deploying from reserve is not as catchy as saying deep strike, and I really wish AOS, we had a word that was catchy. That was not the 40k word because I'm not a 40k player, Fantasy hipster, I play AOS. I don't know, whatever, get on that GW. Um, right, so I'm sitting here, I'm thinking I have my my ridiculous army of 30 chosen and some characters, what can I fill out? Uh, Corvus Cabal, I think, answers one problem. And then with 120 points left, a cockatrice fits exactly. So I think the cockatrice also solves two problems. One, it's something that flies 12 inches, so it's fast, so it can potentially help with some mobility issues. And the other thing, if I don't need the mobility and it can sit with the Chosen, um, it can also sit and prevent something from killing the Chosen, right? Like, if the enemy hammer wants to go into the Chosen and the Cockatrice is sitting there, there's like a 50-50 chance they're only going to be hitting on sixes, and it just makes the makes the enemy melee hammer into the Chosen much scarier for them, because there's a chance their hammer is just going to not do anything. Um, so obviously that leaves a couple problems <laughs> with you. You know, it, this this it, it still is weak to a couple things. It's got a couple problems. Um, first thing is that it could, it's very weak against shooting. Well, to some extent it's weak against shooting. I, I might I might more say it's weak against mortal wounds. Um, so probably weak against like a lot of like like the Seraphon with lots of mortal wound output casting. Um, and then to a lesser extent shooting. Like KO can probably blow this up and play keep away fast, you know, be fast enough that they'll just cry and be sad, but that is most games against KO. <laughs> Even if you're winning, you're sad to play KO. Uh, so that's fine. Um, so yeah, at this point, I'm like, all right, I have this core of dumbness. <laughs> I've solved a couple problems. Uh, and then if I wanted to be a little more serious about this, like what 
what other problems or improvements could I make while still keeping the core? I think that I, I, I think probably the obvious thing here is to go to a one drop instead of a warlord battalion. So drop one of the banners and just go to a one drop because it's three heroes, five units if it's perfectly. Um, makes me sad because like the whole theme, I'm like, ah, I want to go three banners. But if I did want to do that, it's probably a pretty obvious choice to drop the Dread Banner on the Undivided. And at that point, if you're dropping the Dread Banner, maybe just go... Maybe just go, like, Nurgle or even just another Slanesh unit. Like, Slanesh being fast is good on the Chosen or Nurgle and just be like, hey, we're... I think I'm in a melee meta. I, we're just going to be grinding out anyway, even without the eroding icon, like minus one to wound on, on the Chosen in combat is great. So, yeah. If if I drop my theme of three units of ten Chosen each with a banner, I think this can get a lot better. Um, I did play one game with this. <laughs> um, that was amusing and fun. Um, it was against a new player in our group, so like it wasn't like a good stress test. Um, but I played the new cities, um, and various things went wrong <laughs> with his game plan. Um, I lucked out. We rolled. We random. We randomly rolled a, a scenario, a battle plan, and I lucked into one that we were pretty close. So like an 18 inch distance one instead of a 22. So that helped me a lot. And then his um, uh, his warforger primal miscasted and blew himself up on turn one and didn't give mortal wounds to all the shooting output of the list. Um, the cities list so you know that that honestly that that just in itself probably won't be the game um but it worked basically as expected like i shoved 30 <laughs> chosen across the board as fast as i could and got into combat and just started killing everything and uh you know two shoot two turns of shooting with 40 fusiliers and a steam tank barely made a dent in the chosen really like dice probably went my way a little bit um, and like I said, he didn't get the mortal wound spell off in addition to that. And like, in addition to all the other roles, just kind of like going a little more than average my way, he didn't have the mortal wound shooting against me. So, you know, he probably killed five chosen before I got into it, like in one turn of shooting before I got into him. And then, um, he may have, he may have actually wiped one, almost one whole unit of chosen, um, between like cavaliers and shooting, but like. Then two units were chosen, and the Karkdrak is kind of enough to chew through his whole army. So it ended up being a win for me. Um, it was, like I said, it wasn't a good stress test. Um, the guy I played is still learning, and is a great guy, but like not a strategic mastermind yet. Gonna get there. Um, but I would totally, if I had the models, I would totally play this again. Um, I was proxying uh, some Stormcast stuff as chosen, and it was a lot of fun. So there was dumb list number one. Uh, all the Chosen. Great. Dumb list number two. Uh, so, like I said, Slaves have gotten some points drops recently, and I think that uh, with the points drops, there is maybe some unexplored territory in there um, with some of the stuff that has gotten cheaper. And uh, I want to explore that territory. Um... So one of the things that has gotten a lot cheaper is the Theradons, um, and Chariots also went down. So I'm like, all right, Theradons are at the point, they're 10 points of wound now, and they're super killy. They may be at the, they, they may have hit the break point where they're cheap enough that you can throw, you know, maybe throwing six Theradons into a normal list, more, more normal list, quote unquote, could be a good play now. But I'm not interested in throwing six Theradons into a list. I'm interested in dumbness today. So I said, how many Theradons can I put in a list if I'm not really worried about anything else? And chariots. I'm like, chariots are cheap now. Theradons are cheap now. So let's see. This is at 1990. What does this look like right now? I don't remember what I did before this podcast. Um, but I said, all right, as many Theradons and, and, and chariots as possible. Let's just see. So I have two Sorcerer Lords, whatever, cool, for 120 points. I have five Chariots, 
And then I have one, two, three by six Theradons and three by three Theradons. So that is 20, let's see, 18, 21, 24, 27 Theradons, right? So that is 135 wounds of angry Minotaur bros. And that's a lot of wounds. That's a lot of wounds to deal with. I'm like, that is, that is getting to the point where it's just sheer mass to chew through that like surely something is going to be left <laughs> turn like two to kill the enemy with. So you've got 135 wounds of Theradons here. Five chariots is 35 more wounds um, of chariots. So you're up to like 170 wounds plus, you know, plus the, um, the characters. So this list is like 185 wounds, 180 wounds um, of pure stupidness, <laughs> right? Like this is just, this is just a bunch of Theradons and some Chariots, which are core. And the goal here is for the Chariots to go and pin the enemy while the Theradons slowly march forward. Uh, they're five or six inches, whatever they move. I think it's six. Uh, and then get in and kill the enemy. Um, I think the obvious choice on Theradons is corn. So like, I'm just going to say this is all corn. Fun times. Corn, 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 more corn. And obviously, if the I keep saying obviously today, not everything's obvious. I should stop saying that so much. Um, so the Theradons, the goal is to kill everything. So I want corn because uh, with corn on the charge, they go from three to four attacks, and they can once per game go to five attacks, which is great. Uh, that'll just murder anything you touch, I think. <laughs> I haven't really tested it yet. Uh, and then the chariots, if the chariots are charging forward, doing some impact mortals, but generally just wanting to pin things, I think the chariots are all normal. Then I don't really care right now what sorcerer lords are. So so there you go. That's 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 just a ton of Theradons and chariots. This is a little too dumb, right? Like this is not gonna score too well. It's got some obvious glaring weaknesses, one of which being like the Theradon's leadership is bad. What are they? So Theradon, yeah, Theradons are bravery six. They're not great. This list is also leaving a tactic on the table because it doesn't have an insert cell banner. That's also like a free thing that slaves get, which is good. So we should obviously be taking some advantage of our free things that are good. This is a lesson I learned with my OBR. Just take your faction train, even if it's big and annoying, because it's a free thing that is good. So let's get rid of one of these two unit, three units of six Theradons to free up some points and see what we can do to make this a little less dumb uh, and solve some problems. So one problem is it's slow. Um, well, half of it's slow. The chariots are fast. The Theradons are slow. And we don't want things, right, you know, redeploying away from our Theradons, and plus I own the models, so maybe we throw the Unmade in here. So the Unmade are a great little screen, and they also turn off Rally and redeploy the R's, the R commands. Um, so there you go. Some Theradon, or some Unmade to screen, or move up in front of our Theradons and, or whatever, next to them, and stop uh, redeploys. Great. Uh, I also said a problem is that we do not have an insert cell banner yet, and we want that, um, for the tactic, and just because it's a free thing, that is good. So let's throw in a unit of warriors, because that is the cheapest option at 180 now. They got cheaper. Uh, that's cheaper than knights are chosen. Uh, so warriors are our cheapest thing that can take one of the banners. And Nurgle is just real freaking good, so let's throw Nurgle banner on them. Um, so yeah, all right, so we're solving some problems. We're stopping things from redeploying away from Theradons. We are giving ourselves, um, I think March of Ruin is the name of the tactic, so Chaos Warriors can hopefully, eventually, slowly walk into the enemy territory and get us a tactic. Uh, this also gives us more of an anvil. I mean, it's only 20 wounds, but 
minus one to wound and minus one rend. It's very good. It's better than nothing. <laughs> it's better than a seven or eight wound chariot, obviously. Um, and then the other thing I was a little worried about is uh, having all my Theradons run away. So, speaking of things, speaking of things that got cheaper, I'm like, maybe, maybe now is the time to uh, take a Demon Prince. Uh, I did also make this Cabalists because nothing, none of the, none of the sub-factions really benefit like Theradons and Chariots. So I was like, what, what faction should I use here? I took Cabalists because you're going to take probably two um, heroes anyway. Um, so might as well make them better at casting. So let's delete one of these Sorcerer Lords and take a Slaves to Darkness Demon Prince. All right. I think I think the Demon Prince might be cheap enough to have a little play now. We'll see. Um, I like the Axe the best for the weapon. Let's make this guy the General. Um, we'll give him Nurgle because that's probably the only one you really want to take. Because um, you can turn off Ward Saves. So there we go, we're solving another problem. Things with good ward saves to survive through the Theradon, Ren 2, damage 3, terrifying attacks. Now we have a Demon Prince that can walk up with Theradons and maybe turn off um, turn off some ward saves. So yeah, this guy's Nurgle. Um, his spell? We could just throw, whatever. It's never bad to throw Merciless Blizzard on anything. Um, Although, he's 10 wounds, so I don't think he's... I think this is wrong. I think he's actually not a, an Acolyte. Uh, so let's go with a good old Binding Damnation. Making things strike last is always good. And then what else did I do with this guy? So there's a couple Demon Prince command traits that are decent. Um, and I'm very undecided on which one to put on this guy for this list. Um, I think that... So for now, I put not to be denied on him, which means that he can do the Nurgle heroic action. This is, the, this is a huge issue for the Demon Princess. Oh my god, Games Workshop, please, please in the chaos, like, Dawnbringer's book, just update the Demon Prince and make their mark things just abilities that are always on and not heroic actions. That would just instantly fix Demon Princes and give them a place. Um... I feel like they're a little gun shy of that because the corn demon prince used to just be like auto include in lots of armies. But that ability is gone anyway. So just deal with it. Maybe that would make the Nurgle one auto take. But whatever. Give us give us give us a reason to take a demon prince. Anyway, moral of the story is. Um taking not to be denied lets you do a heroic action with the demon prince in addition to anyone else. So um, that would let, for example, the Sorcerer Lord three dice cast, and also let the Demon Prince take his turn off wards thing. Um, it also lets you do something like 3d6 cast with the Sorcerer Lord and get an extra command point with the Demon Prince, which is never a bad thing. So I, I think that's maybe the way to go here. Um, but there is probably also an argument to be made for taking Bolstered by Chaos, which is... Um, plus two wounds for the Demon Prince and making him a monster. So he goes from 10 wounds to 12 and makes him a monster. And if you're already at 10 wounds, like you're already you're already having a lot of downsides from being 10 wounds um, in terms of like, look out, sir, and being able to be seen through Wildwoods and all that stuff. Um, so if you're already 10 wounds, going to 12 wounds is probably good. And having a monstrous rampage in the army to be able to smash things or roar, um, all the good stuff. So I'm very undecided here, and I want to test. I, I actually do want to test this list, um, but I'm undecided on what, what to do with um, the command tree here. Um, we also have War Scroll Builder, you're killing me. These aren't even all the right options for the Demon Prince. Um, because he can take, he either, ta he either takes wings or the trophy rack. Um, and the problem I'm trying to solve here, well, one of the other problems I'm solving with this Demon Prince is 
my issue of I don't want my big units of Theradons thrown away. So I would take the trophy rack here. So basically the Demon Prince is turning off wards potentially in combat if he makes it there. He is preventing my Theradons from running to Battleshock in a 9-inch bubble. Um, and he's another caster, which is never bad. Um, and then if I were to um, take Bolster by Chaos, he's also a monster. So it's a lot of things in this little 150 point package. Um, and he's Nurgle, so he's yeah, he's minus one to be wounded in combat. Um, as I said, a big weakness of this list is going to be that it's the Theradons are a little slow and they can be shot, but there's just so many of them. And the other thing, like the Demon Prince doesn't get lookout Sarah because he's 10 wounds, like I said. But if you're shooting the Demon Prince, you're not shooting the, let's see, how many do I have now? 12, 21. You're not shooting the 21 Theradons that are running up to try and murder you. Um, so I think if people are shooting the Demon Prince, that's probably okay. He's on a three up save. Like he's, he's got a pretty decent save, throw a Mystic Shield on him, whatever. Um, the Sorcerer Lord is basically in this list now to just, um, let's see, Cata Conduit, maybe I'll give him more Frost. I forget what I gave him. Anyway, so the Demon Prince is there to get us two tactics, right? The Demon Prince is going to sit... Oh, sorry, not the Demon Prince. The Sorcerer Lord is here to get tactics. The Sorcerer Lord is here to give us a magic dominance and here to roll on the Eye of the God stable with Chaotic Conduit. So this guy's goal is to just sit in the back outside of Unbind range and get us four points, which is amazing. Whatever. He's a 120-point unit. He's going to sit in the back and get us four points, and he's going to help us with... Um, He's also going to help with Surround and Destroy because he's going to sit on our back edge, table edge, and he's not worried about going forward and doing anything other than just getting tactics. Um, so that is what the Sorcerer, Sorcerer Lord is for. As I said, the Demon Prince has a bunch of little bonus things that he is bringing to the list. Um, I also gave, let's see, when I was messing around with this earlier, I gave the Demon Prince Conqueror's crown. Uh, which is models with one or two wounds within six of him can't contest objectives. Um, so just another bonus thing um, in addition to all that other little tech. So it's a lot, just a lot packed into the Demon Prince package. Everybody's probably trying to shoot him off early. <laughs> Whatever, he's just going to die most games, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I was thinking, in my head I was thinking, all right, like three, third ones do count as two because they're five wounds. But we're pretty low model count. Um, you know, the chariots all count as just two models. So I was thinking Conqueror's Crown might be good to outcount things on objectives. Um, but the other way to outcount things on objectives is just having them dead. So I could also see an argument for Helm of the Oppressor. So I, like I said, I want to test this list. Maybe I'll test it both ways. Uh, oh, and I remember the other spell on the Sorcerer Lord was Demonic Speed, um, because, there's a reason for this, uh, we have our five chariots of Nurgle. The Chaos Chariot, so these things are 80 points. They are on a, I think they're only on a four up save. Let me double check. All right, so for 80 points, you get seven wounds that move 12. They are on a four up save, so the save is not great. But once per game, they can run and charge and they also do mortal impact hits. So when they make a charge move, um, five ups uh, for mortals for every die. You roll a die, sorry. It's the one where you roll a die for every inch you rolled of the charge move. Um, so you pick one unit within an inch, number of dice equal to charge roll for the move, five up, mortal wound. So that means uh, they, they're not elite, so they can't give commands to themselves, which is unfortunate. Um, but the run and charge once per game is not a command, it's just an ability on their scroll. Um, but basically, you know, my, my idea here is I'm just going to have these five chariots probably send like three forward first turn to just try and pin something. Maybe they all go into the same thing for a little discount Nurgle Knight kind of action here. Get 21 wounds into something that's minus one to wound in combat and then on a four up save. Just hoping that they don't all die. Um, 
It also makes since they're three separate units, it's also making like the enemy like split attacks. And there's when you're splitting attacks, there's always a chance that like things are going to go wrong, and one of your splits is not going to do what you want. Um, but then with a, with the sorcerer lord with um, where did my spell go? Yeah, there we go. Demonic speed. With the sorcerer lord with demonic speed, um, giving them three d six charge. That means you've got twelve inches plus a d six run plus a three d six charge. It's a very long threat range, and then that three d six you're you're now getting three d six worth of charge mortals on a five up. So these are these are kind of acting as little potentially as like little darts that are just going into like clear a screen or pick off uh, a hero um, that are very fast. And once you know, at least once per game, they're very fast. And if you get off the three d six from the sorcerer sorcerer lord, um, on average. Whatever a three d six charge is on average what like a ten and a half or eleven, so on average you're doing three or four mortals on the charge uh, on a five up, and that could potentially spike and do more. And then they've got a few attacks, but like they're pinning things, they're cheap little things um, that are also enabling us to get you know the easy surround and destroy throw one of your eighty point chariots off on either flank and just run them off to get surround and destroy. Who cares? They're 80 points. You've still got three to do more important things with. Um, and this is also a very easy, like, intimidate. Obviously, these are all 12-inch range. They're getting out of your deployment zone as fast as you want them to. Theradons um, move six. Like, you're going to get intimidate. So, yeah, just thinking through potential tactics. Um, I didn't mention earlier, um, Slaves does have a nice one that's kill a priest or a totem, uh, which... Not all armies, but a lot of armies are going to have at least one priest or, or totem. Um, and when you have a, a bunch of very, you know, when you have some very killy things, I feel like you can know if it's time to to call that tactic and try and kill something. Um, what else did I have here? Right, I did have a question here. What's my grand strat? <laughs> all right, I picked overshadow um, for this. Just because the demon prince probably going to die, so don't really want to do um, supremacy, whatever. The sorcerer keep a you know keep your general wizard, whatever. Keep your wizard alive. Um, don't really want to do that because the demon prince is probably going to die. Um, I thought about. <sighs> I didn't really think about any other ones. I, I think overshadow is okay, just because you only need. Your tr yeah, this is just trying to kill everything. The, the Theradons are just trying to murder everything anyway. Um, and you have your fast, cheap battle line chariots, um, as well as Unmaiden Warriors are both battle lines. So like odds are you're going to have something battle line left at the end of the game, even if you just have to go run a cheap, like I said, run a cheap chariot off to do Surround and Destroy and hopefully just be away and not die and have your battle line alive. So I picked Overshadow. Um, and then just like thinking through tactics again um, with our, our stupid list here. <laughs> like it's it's dumb, it's crazy, but like can we do tactics? We've got Magic Dom and uh, Roll on the Other Gods of the Character with the Sorcerer Lord. We did take something with an Ensor Cell banner so we can potentially march into enemy territory with that. Um, we have, um, you know, we have all the book ones. We, Charging in with a battle line is going to be easy. Uh, the issue is going to be charging with a character, since we only have the Demon Prince and the Sorcerer Lord. So, like, that's potentially iffy. If this just gets shot off, and this is staying in the back to stay out of unbind range, maybe it's iffy to get charged with battle line and a hero. Let it in the Maelstrom. That's what it's called. There we go. Uh, so that's a little iffy, but maybe we you know, maybe we err on the side of actually running our Sorcerer Lord up with everything else, because we can also get roll on the eye of the gods via standing on a point that we've taken back from the enemy. So maybe the Sorcerer Lord, after doing Magic Dom turn one, actually runs up and helps us get lit into the Maelstrom or, or something else. Um, retreat and Charge. We have so many units, I think, in this list that Retreat and Charge is very easy. Because you don't actually, you know, if you charge in three chariots, like the turn before, right? And like a Theradon unit, and some of them live, you have plenty that you can retreat with and then charge in with 
the second wave of Theradons. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think this actually has somewhat decent um, battle tactic potential. Um, I'm like, I, I really want to test it out. This is the great thing about Tabletop Simulator. So I want to test this out on TTS because uh, there's no way, you know, there's no way I'm buying four chariots. I've, I've won on the way already. Um, but I'm not buying four more chariots and 15 more Theradons <laughs> without knowing if this actually works. Um, honestly, I'm probably never painting that many Theradons, but it's, it's just a fun, dumb list that I want to try out on TTS. And sometimes, you know, we can have fun, dumb lists as a treat. Uh, we don't always have to be min-maxing, trying to win GTs and build the strongest possible thing. Um, but I think there is plenty of room, and this is the whole point of this episode, I think there's plenty of room to run like a heavily skewed themed dumb list and um, just put a little bit of thought into it into scoring tactics and make it into something that can potentially work. So yeah, this is my big dumb Theradon list. <laughs> I had my big dumb chosen list. This is my big dumb Theradon list. Um, it might have legs. Like I said, it's just a ton of wounds. I think I think the final count on this list is almost 200 wounds. I counted up before um, when it was max Theradons. Let's see, 6, 12. So 21 Theradons is 105 wounds of Theradons. We've got 35 wounds of Chariots still. So that's 140 wounds. Um, we have 20 more in the Warriors, so that's 160 wounds. Uh, this is 9, call it 170. Then we've got 180. Yeah, so we're like, we're almost 190 wounds. Which is just a lot of, it's a lot of wounds to deal with. It's a lot of bodies. It's a lot of beef. Um, yeah, I think, so. I think some things would struggle against this. Um, I don't know that it... I don't know. I don't think this list will struggle any more than like my more normal cast list did, um, with like warriors and chosen and knights and like the more normal stuff you see. Um, and I think it could be hilarious. Um, I didn't mention battalions. This actually fits in a two drop because uh, you take the chaos war. You can take two of the chaos warband um, battalions, and each one just has one of the leaders and then six units for two one two two drops sorry each of them is one drop so it's a two drop um so it's a two drop list um you've got a bunch of slightly tough chariots that are fast to run up and pin things while the theradons just like march forward as fast as they can to get into combat and murder things um so i'm envisioning like the um the demon prince is between these two units of six that are like your real killers the three by three are maybe like out on the flanks or in front of the six, like behind the wave of chariots. Um, and then you've got the warriors either like going to hold down like a side objective by themselves or just like marching up to get an enemy territory somewhere. Um, these are maybe in front of some Theradons as a speed bump. These are maybe in front of Theradons as a screen or a speed bump, uh, depending on depending on what you need. I don't know. It feels like it has a lot of options. Like it's all, it's all stupid combat stuff. It's all just marching forward and trying to hit you with an axe. But it's a lot of units. It's a lot of wounds. We'll see. I, I very much want to test this out on TTS. This is all my theory hammering. Um, so yeah, here's the here's the secret tech Ricky's going to be pulling out on TTS whenever I get around to it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I playing dumb lists is fun sometimes, and just throwing a bunch of beef on the table and marching forward at the enemy is like what my brain wants right now. I don't want to think super hard. I don't want to play Cruel Boys right now. I want a little break from Cruel Boys and just caring about little tiny positioning and thinking super hard about everything. Um, so yeah, just a nice little interlude of, of marching forward and hitting things with axes, I think is what my brain needs and wants. Um, I hope this has been somewhat amusing. Um, Hope this has just been, I don't know, an example of how to take a dumb list and make it slightly less dumb <laughs> and think smartly about it and make sure you can do some tactics and uh, all that good stuff. Um, I promise that, I didn't promise. I said I would talk about Stormcast 
Uh, I've also been doing some theory hammering on Stormcast lists, um, and I got in a practice game with them uh, a couple nights ago against a friend. Um, but we're at 45 minutes, and I want to stop here. So I'll talk about Stormcast another time. Maybe I will have gotten in another practice game with them before then. Uh, but yeah, so next next video, I'll talk about Stormcast. Or maybe if I actually get to play my dumb Theradon list, uh, I'll, I'll follow up and talk about how that went. Uh, but yeah, thank you for listening. Hopefully my voice sounds mellifluous and wonderful through this new mic. Um, fingers crossed. Uh, we'll see. Take it easy, everyone. Happy New Year, etc. Love you all. Have fun playing AOS.